Hello friends, this video on neat ray optics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 8. A ray enters a glass sphere of refractive index mu is equal to root over 3 at an angle of incidence of 60 degree. A ray is reflected and refracted at the further surface of the sphere. The angle between the reflected and refracted rays at this surface is so let us first draw a diagram to understand the question better. So let us say that this is the glass sphere, okay? And this is the ray of light which is entering the glass sphere. Now let us draw a normal to the surface, okay? So this will be the angle of incidence. Now what happens as this ray of light enters from air to glass, it undergoes refraction like this. So this is the refracted ray. So let us call this angle as the angle of refraction. We mark it as R1. Now the moment this ray reaches the other surface or the other end of the glass sphere, it again undergoes refraction because now it moves from denser medium to rarer medium. So again let us draw a normal to the surface. So here the ray comes like this. So this angle is the angle of angle of refraction again so let's call this as r1 let's call this for this particular surface this will be the angle of incidence let's call this as r2 and let us call this one as r3 so that is how we named the different angles now one more thing is happening here the question says that when it reaches this farther surface here the refraction and reflection both takes place so this is the refracted ray and reflection takes place like this so this is the reflected ray. So that's what the question says, right? right? That the ray is reflected and refracted at the further surface of the sphere. This is the further surface. So some part gets refracted, some part gets reflected. So this is the overall question. Now let us mark these two points. This point is A and this point is B. So now we got an idea about the question. Now let's try to solve it. Now at point A, Let's first apply the law of refraction, that is the snail's law, which says that sin i by sin r, here r is r1, is equal to mu denser by mu rarer. So mu denser is basically mu of glass and mu rarer is mu of air. So this will be equal to sin i. So angle of incidence here is given as 60 degree. So sin 60 degree divided by sin r1 is equal to refractive index of glass is root over 3, refractive index of air is 1. So from this we can say sin r1 is equal to sin 60 degree divided by root over 3 which is equal to root over 3 by 2 divided by root over 3. So this is equal to 1 by 2. So we can say R1 is equal to 30 degree. So we have calculated the value of R1. Okay. So now if you closely observe this figure, you see that this O is nothing but center of the sphere. So logically OA and OB both are equal. Why? Because they are nothing but radii of the sphere correct so OA and OB are equal so if OA and OB are equal and if you look at this triangle OAB you can say that angle R1 will be equal to angle R2 now R1 is 30 degree therefore R2 will also be equal to 30 degree right so we have calculated R1 we have also calculated R2 now can you tell me what is the angle that we have to calculate actually we have to find out the value of this angle the angle between the reflected ray and the refracted ray okay so r2 also we have calculated now let's do this now let's focus at point b so at point b again we apply the snell's law of refraction so we know that sin i so for this point, angle of incidence is R2 and angle of refraction is R3. So we can say sin R2 by sin R3 is equal to mu rarer by mu denser. So this is equal to sin R2 is 30 degree 
divided by sin r3 this is equal to 1 divided by root 3 or we can say sin r3 is equal to root 3 into 1 by 2 which is equal to root 3 by 2 therefore r3 is equal to 60 degree. So we also found out the value of r3 that is this angle which is equal to 60 degree. So now how do we find out this angle between the reflected ray and the refracted ray? Let us call that angle as x. So now we can see that. So now let us just focus on this point B very closely. Okay, this, this is very critical now. So if you look at this dotted line, this is a straight line, right? This dotted line. So let us now focus on this dotted line. So if you look at this line, this is a straight line, right? That means this total angle is 180 degree. So we can say that R3 plus X plus this angle will be equal to 180 degree. And how much is this angle? So this is the incident ray. This is the reflected ray. So angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So this angle will also be equal to R2. Right? So we can say R3 plus X plus R2 is equal to 180 degree because all these three they together form a straight angle. So, and here we know the value of R3 as 60 degree. What is the value of R2? It is 30 degree and this is equal to 180 degree. So X is equal to 180 degree minus 90 degree which is equal to 90 degrees. So we can say that the angle between the reflected and the refracted ray is 90 degrees. So option C is the correct option. Question number 9. In vacuum to travel distance D, light takes time T and in medium to travel distance 5D, it takes time capital T. The critical angle of the medium is so here we are talking about two scenarios. In first scenario, we are talking about vacuum. And in the second scenario, we are talking about a medium. So what happens in a vacuum? In vacuum, the speed of light, let's say that the speed of light is V1. So distance traveled in vacuum divided by time taken. So how much distance is traveled in uh, vacuum? It's D and time taken is T. Similarly, in case of the medium, the speed of light would be distance traveled in the medium divided by time taken in the medium. Right? Now, by definition of refractive index, we know that refractive index mu is equal to speed of light in vacuum by speed of light in a medium or speed of light in air by speed of light in medium. Right? So, this is equal to d by small t divided by 5d by capital T. So this is equal to D by T into capital T by 5D. So this gets cancelled. So this is equal to capital T by 5T. So this is the value of refractive index. Okay. Now let's apply the law of refraction. That is the Snell's law of refraction. So what do we know? We know that sin i by sin r. Now, since here we are concerned with the critical angle. So, okay, first let me just write down the rule. Sin i by sin r is equal to mu rarer by mu denser. Because in this case, the light is moving from denser medium to rarer medium, right? So, here sin i will be equal to sin c. Now, when angle of incidence is equal to critical angle, then the refract angle of refraction will be equal to 90 degree. So this is equal to mu r. Mu r is the refractive index in the vacuum which is equal to 1 divided by the refractive index in the denser medium whose value we have just now calculated right that is capital T by 5t or we can say sin c is equal to 5t by capital T therefore c is equal to sin inverse 5 t by capital T. So which is the correct option? Obviously it is C. Question number 10. Two lenses of power 15 D and minus 3 D are placed in contact. The focal length of the combination is. So what is D? D here is diopter which is the SI unit of power of a lens. 
Now, whenever there are two lenses in contact, let's say that there are two lenses of focal lengths f1 and f2 which are in contact, then the focal length of the combination that is 1 by capital F is given by 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2. So, in this case, what is f1 that is focal length of the first lens? This is equal to 1 by p1 because power of a lens is the reciprocal of focal length of that lens. So, this is equal to 1 by 15 meters. Similarly, f2 is equal to 1 by p2 which is equal to 1 by minus 3 meters. So, now when we have to calculate 1 by capital F, this is equal to 1 by F1 plus 1 by F2. That is equal to 15 plus minus 3 which is equal to 12. So, therefore F is equal to 1 by 12 meters. Now here the options are given in centimeters. So, let us convert it into centimeters by multiplying by 100. So, this is equal to 8.33 centimeters. So, E is the right option. Question number 11. Question number 11. A concave lens of focal length f forms an image which is 1 by 3 times the size of the object. Then the distance of the object from the lens is. So basically we will have to calculate the value of u in this question. right? So what is given here? It is given that the size of the image is one third times the size of the object. So we know that magnification is equal to image height by object height. So this will be equal to 1 by 3. We also know that magnification is equal to V by U that is ratio of the image distance to the object distance. Now let us make use of the lens formula. So the lens formula says 1 by V minus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F or we can say 1 by V is equal to 1 by F plus 1 by U. So this can be written as U plus F divided by U F. So, this is the value of V. Now, let us put this value of V here. So, magnification will be equal to U. So, this is 1 by V. So, V will be what? So, from this we can say V is equal to U F divided by U plus F. So, now we will put this value of V in this equation. So, magnification will be equal to U F divided by U into U plus F. So, u and u will get cancelled. So, this is f divided by u plus f. So, this is how we can relate magnification with object distance. Now, here we are talking about a concave lens. Now, if you remember the concept of concave and convex lens. So, this is how a convex lens looks like and this is how a concave lens looks like. And when we are talking about f, that is focal length, we f refers to the second principle focus. So, f is negative. The second principle focus always li lies along the negative x-axis, right? So, f is negative for concave lens, right? So, now magnification will be equal to minus f divided by u plus minus f, that is u minus f. So, basically I am taking into consideration the sign convention right away. Correct? Now, m is given as 1 by 3. So, this is equal to minus f divided by u minus f. So, we can say u minus f is equal to minus 3f or we can say u is equal to minus 3f plus f which is equal to minus 2f. Right? So, here we can say object distance is equal to minus 2f. So, here minus sign just shows that the object is on the negative side or, or is along the negative x-axis. But as such, the object distance value is 2f. That is option A. Question. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.